we found on the new long uh, DS9C sewing head that the um, the main adjustment to ensure correct uh, looping and, and uh, sewing is to set up correctly the intersection uh, between the the hole on the needle and the hole on the on the looper. Now it's shown in the book in the operating manual. Um, it is shown here. I'm not quite sure of the page number, but down on the lower right it shows this picture and this is exactly what we want to achieve so that the, the elongated hole on the needle and the round hole on the, on the looper uh, inter intersect each other cor uh, perfectly. So what you would have is we have the, the larger hole like this on the looper and then we have the elongated hole on the main needle and we want to get those so that they intersect as close as possible center center. Okay so that's the main objective. Now the book shows some other adjustments. Um, this for example which is, is not crucial in fact we found this adjustment here on this on this uh, tie rod here that go that drives the looper. It says 38.5 millimeters looks like usually 39 to 40 millimeters is more correct. Um, also likewise uh, this adjustment that it shows on the needle uh, this is only for reference only because again the crucial part is where that hole in the needle comes down and inter intersects the, the looper. So um, what we do here the main two adjustments are pretty straightforward uh, instead of adjusting this linkage here to move the looper up and down just for fine adjustment uh, it's better to loosen these two cap screws up here okay and so what we do so when we loosen these two cap screws it'll move this arm in and out which comes down through the linkage and effectively moves the, the looper up and down and then for the needle uh, main thing here is make sure that um, the needle is first of all make sure the needle is pushed in all the way okay and the needle adjustment is not so simple. Uh, on that one we have to remove the bottom plate. Okay, so first of all we drain the oil. We have a, an oil drain hole here. Remove the bottom plate. And what you'll see is on the, um, on the needle bar shaft here, there is a clamp. And I'm not sure if we have a picture of it here. Um, but you'll see that there is a, uh, you'll see that there is a clamp there on that shaft and uh, you just loosen that clamp up and then you can adjust the needle bar in and out. So what we're looking for is when the two of them come together okay like right there if you look straight through the the hole on the looper you should be looking directly through the hole on the needle. Alright so what we want to do <clears throat> like I said is you know you adjust the needle bar in and out okay to get the needle position and then you adjust, you loose, just loosen this up here and you can adjust that shaft and that will bring your looper up and down. Okay, so that's <clears throat> crucial dimension number one. Um, <clears throat> then once that is set up, then, to, then we go on with the other adjustments which are fairly straightforward. Um, we want to make sure that there is a little bit of clearance, okay, between the, the needle and the looper itself, just a, a very small amount. If we look here, uh, we can see, I don't know if you can see that, just a little bit of deflection down there. Um, I'm not sure what we have, you know, it might be uh, less than half a millimeter, you know, ten thousandths of an inch or so. Um, and then we also set up, then we just need to set up also the uh, needle guides. Okay, so again we use the uh, <clears throat> excuse me, we use the the deflection technique um, so there should be a little bit of deflection okay between the needle and the needle guard it looks like that needle guard needs to be moved to the left a little bit and then also we have the other uh, needle guard on the right hand side here again I don't think that one is so crucial but uh, we just go through the stroke and yeah it looks like that one actually needs to come quite a bit uh, this one, uh, this one needs to come in to the left a little bit because there's a lot, it's a lot more clearance there than 
than what we actually need. So those will will have to adjust on this head. All right, <clears throat> and then the other adjustments um, are the height of the uh, the feed dog above the throat plate. Okay, they recommend they do show that fairly clearly in the book. Um, it says two and a half millimeters. Um, the so what we're looking at the rear feed dog right here. So there's two feed dogs, front and rear. The rear feed dog at the leading edge because it is tapered slightly. At the leading edge should be two and a half millimeters. Okay, and we have that uh, on our. Um, I don't have it in front of me here, but on our tool, on our adjusting tool uh, gauge for the uh, for the machine, um, we do have a notch. Okay, that is two and a half millimeters here that you can use to make that uh, check that adjustment. Now, interestingly enough, this is a brand new head, and uh, there is actually less. So this is where we're adjusting it, right here. This is the uh, front feed dog, rear feed dog. And the book says two and a half millimeters. Now, interestingly enough, this one is more like uh, one and a half to two millimeters. And how, and what you can see here is, is that the, uh, basically the feed dogs uh, come up right to the bottom of the V in the feed dog is, is about parallel with the throat plate. Um, now on the other machine, when we set it up for two and a half, we see that that bottom of the V is quite a bit above the throat plate. So, but as the book says, two and a half. So we'll uh, we'll set it like that for now. Uh, the other very important thing is is um, to make sure that the the front and rear feed dogs are set uh, at the correct height. Okay, so what we do there is we, we lift up uh, with, actually with the um, pressure foot off, we can lay a flat edge, okay, like a file. Okay, we lay a, lay a flat edge over top of the, um, the teeth, okay, and it should be flat, okay, not rocking at all, it should be sitting flat on there. Likewise, when you, here, when you put the, the pressure foot down, you, you know, if we lift up and down, there's no rocking, it's sitting flat across, okay? Um, there is, what you'll see is underneath, it's tough that you can't see it on here, but um, there is a small slot of jacking screw that's sitting up underneath here that is actually used to hold that feed dog up. So we see that you lock it here, but like I said, there is a small jacking slotted screw, a tiny one underneath, that is actually used to uh, adjust the height.